Welcome to the Buy and King Stock Market Q&A live stream. I answer questions asked only by members of my private Discord group. So if you want to ask me a question, be sure to join my Discord group. The link to that is in the description below. Now something right off the bat that I want to address is so many people are wondering why is Tesla up 3% today and Apple is up 4% today. Like what's going on with these stocks? Did some huge news break out? I mean Tesla trading at over $2,060 a share and here's Apple at $493 a share when it was just at $300 like a couple months ago. So what's going on here is you guys remember the stock split that Apple and Tesla announced. Well, today is the last day that you can buy Apple or Tesla stock before those stocks split for the public. So if you are if you already own Apple and Tesla stock right now, then you're guaranteed to have the split by August 24th, I wanna say. I know that's the deal with Apple. I'm not too certain if that's the deal with Tesla. So there's a whole lot of confusion in the market right now. I've tried to make as many videos as I can explaining to people why it's not super important to buy Apple or Tesla before their stock split. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but right now a lot of people are being told that if you buy it right now, you'll 4X your money by the time the stock splits, and that's not how it works at all, guys. It's just a matter of taking every one share that you own right now, and it will be divided into four separate pieces. It's like taking a $1 bill and exchanging it for four quarters. That's the way that Apple stock split works, the four to one split. So you have more things to carry around or shares but they're all 25 cents each not a dollar so um it still adds up to the same amount it's just you have more shares now so it do it doesn't really make a huge difference and in tesla's case it'd be like if you were to take a 100 dollars bill and exchange it for 520s same amount of money just more bills now so it doesn't really make that big of a difference um, but now whenever you buy one tesla share it will only be buying a one twenty dollar bill so if you still want to buy as much as a tesla share is worth right now you'd have to buy all five of these shares but i'm not going to get into the weeds of whether i think apple and tesla are worth buying right now i will tell you that i'm not buying these stocks i don't have any interest in them right now they're trading a little rich for my liking but uh, that's just my two cents on that thoughts on nvidia yeah i've i haven't looked into nvidia since like geez 2018 or something but I will tell you, so NVIDIA is a graphics chips company and I'm not too great with with um, hardware, <laughs> uh, technology hardware, just because chips are not my strong suit and I don't understand like who's gonna make the best chip. Will it be Intel, will it be NVIDIA, will it be um, AMD? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna look too much into the background of them. I just wanna look at their balance sheet and income statement and really try to make sense of their valuation. So, Nvidia, a stock that trades at $500 a share and a market cap of $308 billion. Wow, Jesus, that is a gigantic company. We'll see if we can make sense of this market cap though. So, they currently have a PE ratio of a 92X, um, which doesn't have to be terrible. Right now, profits are all over the place during COVID-19. So we'll do, we'll do our own research and see if that's reasonable. And they have an EPS of a five. So what this means is that for every $500 that you buy of this stock, you're getting $5 worth of profit. So you're pretty much paying five, $500 for a company that's making $5 in profit a year. So a little rich but um, maybe they're growing and maybe their future is yet to be had. I feel like I remember, I remember Nvidia having like some sort of deal with Tesla where they use their chips in the Tesla cars and then Tesla like pulled out and started using some other chips or something like that. I don't know, I could be completely wrong. So earnings results for the past four quarters have been great. I mean, they've been beating on estimates. They do have a more more of a challenge this next quarter um, expected EPS of two dollars and 53 cents who knows if they'll hit it but so far in 2020 it looks like they've been doing just fine during COVID so uh, hopefully things turn out great for them revenue over the past four years have been just great and on a great incline except for 2020 so far we all know what's been going on in 2020. We got COVID, but hey, this is only three quarters worth of 2020. They still got another quarter to report on in November, so it could 
be even greater than 2019 and it's looking like it probably will be now eps it might exceed 2019 it might not i can't really um it's it's a little difficult to tell but so far it's looking solid for nvidia in terms of growing revenues and growing profits that's solid i love that a lot let's take a look at some statistics we'll take a look at their price to sales ratio and if that's at least pretty healthy then i'm not going to knock the pe ratio too much because if they're a growth company then truthfully the pe ratio can always come down as they start increasing profits and, and this, as long as the stock price doesn't go up absurdly high so we've got a price to sales ratio of a 25x which is more than double what i'm willing to pay for a stock this pretty much means you're paying 25 dollars for a company that makes one dollars in sales in one year one dollar in one year <laughs> if you were to use like the lemonade stand analogy that i love to use if a if a kid selling a lemonade stand only made one dollar in a year would you buy it for 25 dollars the whole business um, it's up to you but so that's just a little observation i like to make I'm not too interested in their income statement. We already saw their profits and their uh, their revenues. So we are going to look at the balance sheet to see how financially strong this company is, how much money is in their bank accounts, pretty much. So cash on hand, we've got pretty much $11 billion cash on hand, which is a decent amount. But when you've got a market cap of $300 billion, I would definitely expect you to have a lot more than that. Total cash almost 11 billion right there total current assets about 14 billion and total assets outstanding is only 17 billion dollars okay that's pretty low for a company with a 300 billion dollar market cap there's no other way i can put it that that is pretty low but hopefully it's not lower than their liabilities so total current liabilities is at almost two billion dollars and total liabilities comes in at 5 billion so that's great at least they have a asset to debt ratio of a okay so we do 17.3 and 5 11 11 gives them an asset to debt ratio of a 3.4 which is great like i said guys i love an asset to debt ratio of above a three that's just phenomenal and you can't really ask for a, for a better asset to debt ratio it means that you have three times as many assets as you have liabilities or debts on the company so you can completely pay off these liabilities and still have uh, a lot of of assets on hand so yeah um truthfully this stock is trading a little rich for my liking in both pe ratio actually i didn't even look at the forward pe ratio let's see. so what the forward pe ratio tells us is they give us the forward eps for next year and compares the current stock price right now compared to what the profits are expected to be in the future so they're like so if you buy right now you're pretty much buying a like a fair value for the future um so for for a growth company i like a p ratio of around a 30 or even below a 30 but anything above um you know sometimes you sometimes you never get that low on a company but i prefer below a 30 for a growth company so forward pe of a 61 honestly that is a little high but it's nothing close to what tesla or an amazon trade at uh, where you're getting into the 100 times forward pe ratio which is just absurdly high so nvidia just to summarize too expensive for my taste but not as expensive as tesla or amazon cryoport um if this is a penny stock i'll tell you right now i'm not going to be too optimistic on it uh, okay it's forty dollars a share so it's not a penny stock let's see what they've been trading in the past okay so not a terrible chart for a five-year chart um, and that concludes our examination of this stock thank you for for watching a, a certain youtuber on this plan <clears throat> but so this company has a market cap of 1.5 billion dollars let's see if we can make sense of this Currently, they're losing 63 cents a share, so that's not terrible, um, but it means they're not profitable. Let's take a look at, so yeah, EPS has been spotty. I'm not going to knock them for that. COVID has been pretty rough, and it looks like they're probably just, they set expectations too high for this one quarter in 2019, and they got obliterated <laughs> completely by 
uh, by Wall Street right there. So um, revenues and earnings over the past four years have been pretty solid in terms of sales just growing consistently in an upward trend. I love this a lot. And uh, as we can see, earnings have been very spotty and not really growing or uh, decreasing in a certain trend here. 2019, you guys can see, was very bloody. But this doesn't concern me so much. I'm betting that they're a newer company. And um, so sales are growing great. All you really have to do is figure out how to cut costs and how to figure out how to turn more of those revenues into profits. So yeah, the first few years of a company's life are going to be unprofitable and bloody. But once they get stable, once they get in a routine and they can figure out how to make those cuts, then things start going a little bit better for them. I do want to read up on what this company is exactly. So, so Cryoport Inc. provides temperature controlled logistics and bio storage services to the life sciences industry in the Americas, Europe and Middle East, Africa and Asia Pacific. It operates in two segments, global logistics solution and global bio services. The global logistics solution. Okay, so it's a science company way over my head. I, I don't understand this industry at all. But hey, maybe they can make this into something profitable. I don't know yet. They're obviously making sales and they're growing at a very fast pace. So we'll take a look at their current um, price to sales ratio. And that will at least give us an idea of how rich this company is trading right now. So current price to sales of a 32 point six now who knows they could be estimated to like really boost in sales over the next coming years and that's why this price to sales ratio is so rich uh, at least in my opinion this is very rich for a price to sales ratio i like something under a 10 like i told you guys but um this could be a company that's poised for huge growth in the future and that's why it's trading so high so i'm not gonna knock it and say that it's absurdly high and that no one should buy it right now so income statement we don't care too much about. We already saw their revenues and their <clears throat> net incomes. So we take a look at total cash here. Uh, this is a $1 billion company, if I remember correct. And they have total cash of $94 million in the bank. Solid. Um, <clears throat> and total current assets of $103 million. Total assets of $140 million. Not terrible. Liability sits at only $5 million. Are you kidding me? That's outrageously good. Total liabilities of 9.5 million. Jeez, man. This company's slaying it on the freaking balance sheet, bro. That's crazy. Okay, so if we were to do an asset to debt ratio on this company, so we take 35.8 divided by 9.5. So we're getting an asset to debt ratio of a 14x. Like I've told you guys, if you got a three times asset to debt ratio, you can sleep easy. That's phenomenal. You don't got to worry about anything because the company can just pay off all its liabilities, all its debts, and still have plenty, plenty of assets on hand. Now, these assets are also buildings and things that might not be that easy to sell, but still, they're assets versus liabilities. So 14x, I, I, commend, I commend this company for that. That is solid, and I highly respect any company that can take care of their balance sheet that well. So my current thoughts on cryo cryoports, I don't know a whole lot about their industry. It looks like they're growing sales uh, great and the stock is up 17% today. I wonder why that is. Expands global supply chain platform by signing agreement to acquire, okay, some other company. Again, guys, this industry is way over my head and I don't wanna take the time to delve into exactly <laughs> what they do as a company, but, um, yeah, if you guys if you guys are buying this company for future growth, um, they definitely take great care of their balance sheet right now. I think it's a little rich for a growth company, but hey, if you really believe in this company, I'm not gonna stop anyone from buying this stock. But I'm also not telling anybody to be buying this stock or or avoiding this stock right now. Th those are just my two cents. Thank you for watching. Remember, I only answer questions asked by my Discord members. So if you want to ask me a question that gets answered in this video, be sure to join my private Discord group. The link to that is in the video description.